Rathlin Island is the only populated island in Northern Ireland. Everyday life here is shaped by fishing and farming. Recently, an old tradition has been enjoying something of a renaissance. Kelp is back on the menu. In the springtime, large school of mackerel pass around the island, offering a tasty alternative to prawn, crab and lobster, which are caught all year round. This is phenomenal. All these plants, it's an edible garden. See the colour change? Oh, yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? Kate Burns's son, Phil McFowl, is a carpenter and the family cook. If you haven't got much, you've always got the option to go and try and catch a fish. Sure, you know? sure. Phil likes to reinterpret traditional Irish recipes and experiment with Japanese dishes in his own style. Rathlin lies in the northwest, eight kilometers from the coast of Northern Ireland. Kate and Benji McFowl, her oldest son, are heading out on the boat to harvest their homegrown aquatic vegetables. We've got a beautiful day today, but I mean, this is unusual. The weather's not normally just as, as kind as this, you know? Kelp belongs to the algae family and is grown along large ropes under the surface of the sea. It can be harvested after five to six weeks. The locals used to collect the marine plant along the shore and used it to bleach linen for the textile industry. Growing the kelp out at sea for use in the kitchen is more common in Japan. This is the kelp here that we make the noodles from. And it's so clean, you can see it's no blemishes, it's blemish free. And it grows in sheets on the rope. And this particular kelp grows very well on Rathlin because it likes cold waters and harsh conditions. Benji McFowl is a trained fisherman. This is a wee bit different, so it is, to what most fishermen would do, like, you know. But it's, uh, it's a bit of diversification, you know, so. Um, we're trying it out to see how it's, how it's going to work, you know, and it seems to be slowly but surely coming ahead, you know. Uh, I would say sliced. Yeah. The kelp is cut into ribbons at the port, where Philip has set up an al fresco kitchen. He makes the various fillings for the wraps with peppers, salad, avocado, and crab meat. And kelp noodles with added bittersweet pomegranate seeds. If you are not fond of seafood, it's an easy one to start on because it's not overpowering. It's just a slight hint of salt and that marine taste, you mm. know? That's right, yeah. Phil adds some mung beans and fresh crab meat that his brother Benji brought along this morning. Okay. So we'll mix up some crab, some chili and some chives here. Philip is a trained chef, but in the end opted for carpentry. Nowadays, he only treats his friends and family to his culinary experiments. Lunch used to be a miserable sandwich, but now Philip has discovered the sea vegetable for himself. 
Well, I did travel away. I lived in Scotland for some time, and quite most people do when they're younger, you know, go away until they find, if you're lucky enough to find work here. But I've been home now quite a few years, and uh, I like it here. There's a lot of opportunity, I think, and it gives you... Uh, yeah, you get to do things people wouldn't be able to do in the mainland. No, I like it here, and I'll stay here for the while. uses wheat flatbread for his wraps. Nice and fresh. Isn't it? The kelp. Yeah, so did he go out to the seaweed rope? Yeah, today? yeah, we actually lifted about, well, we got we, we got about eight boxes early on just to keep getting through the kelp while it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so In the summer, plenty of anglers and also some tourists come to the island and take in its natural splendor. But most of the visitors have to leave before nightfall. There aren't too many sleeping options. Rathlin Island has 120 inhabitants, most of whom live near the port. Kate and her lab assistant, Sarah, are collecting spores for a new kelp aquaculture that will grow on the ropes far out at sea. Bingo. They're gathering spores in the algae plant, which move in a similar way to living cells. Yep, there's some here. Excellent, look. Inside here, there's little nodules called sporangia, and they will release spores. Spores are like the seed. And in the lab, in the kelp nursery, we'll get this plant to release its spores into a jar, and they'll all be swimming around, and then we'll pour them into our tank, and we'll grow them on as tiny little babies. So you have to sing to them. <laughs> and we sing to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some there. Actually, that's, nice quite, too, that's yeah. quite nice. Yeah. Harvesting them is only the first step. In the laboratory, the dark patches containing the seeds are dried and put in the fridge overnight. When the plants are then put into seawater, the spores are released in one go, a little trick to convince the plant to let out its spores. It is high precision work. The next bit's even more high precision, actually. This is still, I'm allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to do the next stage. <laughs> Neither Kate nor Sarah are trained lab technicians. She studies horticulture and has taught herself over time how to grow kelp. I'm happy to make loads and loads of little, little baby plants. I moved to the island because of this. I didn't move and then decide to work here. I moved here to learn about the seaweed and how to propagate it. And then Kate gave me a job. I hung around long enough. <laughs> On string, the spores are placed into a tank filled with seawater. When they're put back in the sea, the small green dots grow into the large kelp leaves along the ropes.
Aside from the harbour area, the island is sparsely populated. Hidden away, there are some active farms. Philip bought a farm in the middle of the island several years ago. It has been empty for a long time and is in need of renovation. But first, he wants to build a small summer hut for his mother Kate in his garden. The carpenter has specific ideas about how he wants to build it. Well, it's, it's mostly made from it was about 50% recycled material. It's all timber that I had wood I had gathered from other jobs and things. And this, even this roof sheeting, is, it's extra pieces from big commercial buildings. As far as the structure is concerned, it's just made it up as I was building it, sort of. I've done some draw scribbles, but it's a simple little house. It's just one bedroom and one bathroom. A group of boat builders are helping him. They need his help in putting an old rowing boat back together. Now you know something? No. It's all give and take. So when you get a little bit, when Philip helps us, we help Philip. We really believe in many hands make light work, so we're just giving him a hand here with a lot of the heavy lifting and cleaning and manual labour, and that helps him get Kate's cabin up quicker. Kate lives in Belfast for half of the year, but spends her summer months here on the island. My mother, you know, everybody's mother's... They try to push them on, get them to do things, and, uh, yeah, without my mum, you know, she, she helps me to, to do things I wouldn't do otherwise. I probably wouldn't do it without her pushing me and saying, I want this cabin built, so uh, now I'm, I'm giving it a go. Otherwise, it might never have happened. You know? Philip himself lives in a caravan, as he can't move onto the farm yet. He's invited the whole family over for dinner. He gets the ingredients from his garden. What's cooking tonight? Uh, tonight I'm gonna have something traditional. It's an Irish stew, so not too complicated. The stew has to cook for several hours, so Kate is making some pizza dough to serve beforehand. Phil got fresh lamb's meat from his neighbor. Beef is also a popular stewing meat. Before he browns it, he covers it with plenty of flour. A lot of flour is good. It helps the meat to brown better. Also, then when you add water, it helps to thicken it in the end. After the time, you know the flour cooks cooks through, uh, so it'll thicken, thicken the stew. Philip braises the meat with onions, peppers, and herbs to add some spice. Okay, we'll get this on the fire here. It wasn't that long ago that the locals all cooked outside, not because they enjoyed it, but because they had to. People didn't have modern kitchens until 1970s, 80s. Most people cooked just in front of an open fire. It was a, they would have had big iron pots and something, a heavy iron pan like this, you know, and everything was done just in the fire. So. Most of all, stew requires patience. All the ingredients, the vegetables, potatoes, as well as the braised meat, come together in the pot. With a little water, the stew cooks for at least two hours. I'd use my belly stuck to my back. It would be really yeah, short. Oh, it's hard to beat a good, a good feed after a long day's work. So it is. Aye, a long day's work. Would you, would you know what that is? Would you? 
Well, I wouldn't know what a day's work is, no. no. Oh. Uh, I don't, I don't work. <laughs> Kate tends to the first guests. One of her sons has brought home baked bread and freshly smoked mackerel. What is today a garden party for friends was once the daily graft for Kate. So most people use gas here. We only got electricity in 1991. Uh, for the first time, we were allowed to have irons. Which was because you know, we'd use gas before. Like you have to be quite diligent. Like it's a constant. It's constant, isn't it? Or is it? Well, it is. I mean, I think as well. Then it was just those were tough times for people. It's one of those things. It's like, would I want to go back to it? Mm, not sure. But at the time, young, full of energy. Mm -hmm. You know, let's milk the cow. <laughs> <laughs> so really, we're quite yeah. self-sufficient without it being the good life. Uh -huh. So we weren't necessarily doing it for sexy reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Kate's other son, Fergus, is helping with the pizza. He lives on the island with his wife and child. As is custom for the islanders, the pizza topping is fresh crab meat. Oh. The island must have a magnetic attraction. All of Kate's four sons have worked abroad, some even in America, but in the end, all have come back. Have you had any? No, I haven't. Oh, <laughs> Due to its unique geographical location, the island has an eventful history. From the Romans and the Vikings to the English, the island has been continuously conquered. But these days, it's a little more peaceful. It's famous for its puffin colonies in the north. The strong currents of the Irish Sea offer the birds perfect fishing conditions. Holiday here. In the lab, Kate and Sarah cut the harvested kelp into ribbons. Kelp only grows in cold water and is also used as a fertilizer. Kelp me if you can, I'm feeling down. Down. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Ground, ground. Help me if you can, I'm feeling down. Won't you please help me, help me, help me? There you go. Right. Sorry, we're getting silly now. <laughs> no, that's right. You're doing this for a few hours, you get silly. I worked in the US. Uh, for three years with a fishery organization and we did some work with a company who were the first people in the United States to farm kelp for food. And basically, we copied them. Philip's carpentry skills are in demand. This type of boat has been built in Europe since the Bronze Age. Its owners rebuilt it three years ago and the oars need to be renewed. This is going to make a better difference. If, if, if our oars back here, mm -hmm. we're not. You obviously don't want it too close to you, though, because if it's too close, it can yeah. knock you over the seat. You know, sometimes you fall backwards into the boat. Philip was born on the island and has been repairing boats for most of his life. He has all the tools and knows every trick in the book. Well, it's just making sure the oars are balanced on the gunnel and we've got they're not too hard to, to push down and also that they're not trying to keep as much of the oar inside the boat as possible but without them being too close that you would hit each other's hands and, and cause problems inside the boat so it's just a matter of um, figuring it out for each set of oars because it's different as the boat goes up because the boat's a different width and as you go up it gets narrower or wider. Hi, 
Nice big, nice big piece of fresh laminaria. Lunch. Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do with that? So um, we'll make a nice dashy soup with this. Okay. Why don't I go ahead and chop the onions then? Yeah, go for okay. it. Yeah, that'd be great. And I'll prepare this. Okay. Sarah and Kate are making an Irish-Japanese lunch. Kelp fusion food. Okay. Yes, ready. Yeah, absolutely. Get on. Put her into the. Get on with it. I'm really hungry. Are you, Kate? Okay? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get all... this. It was hard work all morning. I know. I know. <laughs> so that's just going to go in there. You see the colour change? Oh, oh yeah. Isn't that gorgeous. Well, the Japanese call it dashi, and it's a type of stock used to bring out that umami flavour which is that extra flavour that we don't really have here in the West. Well, we have it, but we don't talk about it that much. We talk about sweet and savoury, but they also have this umami. Umami is considered one of the five basic tastes and means hearty and Great spicy in Japanese. Uh, Algae falls under this there. definition, as do some meats. Ginger Good. is added to the yeah. dish and other spices. For the soup broth, one can add whatever one pleases. Vegetables, chicken and tofu are classics. Sarah has a trick up her sleeve. So, um, I'll put some of this beetroot juice in. Lovely. Nice, rich colour. Lovely. Green and red. What do you get from that? Lovely. Yeah. Okay. Beetroot juice doesn't okay. just give the soup a splendid colour, but adds a hint of bitterness. Tiny bit. Tiny bit. Yeah. Whoever hasn't eaten their fill can fry the kelp, finely chopped, with the remaining meat. OK, pop some in. Okie doke. Oh. Instead of salt, soya sauce should be added. You need tongs for that. Yeah. So I'm going to take out this piece of kelp, which can be used as something else. Island life mainly plays out in the port. This is where Sarah and Kate have chosen to spend their lunch break. Today, they're cooking for their colleagues. Cooking with algae is not a part of traditional Irish cuisine, but on the island, it's slowly becoming common knowledge that kelp is good for more than just bleaching linen. OK, ready when you are, guys? All right, boy. The boat is not ready yet, but the team are eager to try it out. It's passed its first test. It floats. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Should be enjoyable. And such a nice day, so. Yep, let's go. Yeah. Oh, look at it! 